Unlike the film itself, this one's actually going to be short. I would put some music and some audio cues in this intro. Killers of the Flower Moon is the latest film by master director Martin Scorsese. And boy, is it a chunker of a film! This epic crime drama sports numerous elements all coming together like the spiciest goddamn soup on the menu, featuring all the paraphernalias that make up a potential modern classic, and it probably could be one for all I know, but that assumes you can get over the hurdle that is the colossal girth of it all. Not gonna lie, Killers of the Flower Moon is all cinema, no fucks when it comes to a sheer wellspring of twists, happenings, and twisted beauty all the more. Clocking in at 3 hours and 26 minutes when including the credits. With a cast list so stacked, you can shove it up your ass and die from all the organs, inevitably getting crushed from cramming it all in there. Adapted from the book of the same name that tackles the real-life history of the Osage murders of the 1920s, the plot. This big McHuge ball of a plot centers around Ernest Burkhart, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, coming home from World War I and reconnecting with his uncle who prefers to refer to himself as King, played by Robert De Niro, who poses as a reserve deputy sheriff and supporter of the Osage tribe of Native Americans, but secretly aims to kill them for their vast amounts of property, particularly the oil head rights from the family of Molly Kyle, played spectacularly by Lily Gladstone. It doesn't take long for DiCaprio and Gladstone's characters to hook up and marry, in a sick scheme concocted by King to kill the rest of Molly's family, and even herself, to obtain these head rights, one Osage at a time. And knowing that she and her tribe are in danger, Molly eventually seeks the help of the Bureau of Investigation to help stop the killings. The premise is itself a rather simple one, and in the hands of a different screenwriter and director, I can imagine this being a rather simple film. But Scorsese never aims for simplicity. What we really have here is a tapestry. A methodical tapestry of betrayal and bloodshed that connects with the gut of dishonesty our main criminal cast exhibits as the Osage Native Americans are murdered in the name of wealth. What Scorsese and the rest of the filmmakers managed to achieve is to elevate this otherwise simple crime story into something tangibly multifaceted, ambitious in its scale, and confident in its result, even at the cost of time itself. And while you do feel the hours go by, the film gives back by providing you with a fascinating, elongated tale of greed that's shockingly detailed to match its ambition. There's a real attempt at respecting the true Osage culture here. They even use their real-life language to punctuate both the theme of their existence and, in the most downtrodden of times, to illustrate the oncoming destruction of said existence if nothing is done about it. It leaves quite an impression when you watch the film itself as each Osage native is ruthlessly and unceremoniously killed one after another in King's plan to seize control over their oil rooting you in the history of the period like you really were transported to 1920s Oklahoma. Tragedies pile up, schemes are made and executed so well, that by the time the FBI show up, it's like witnessing the lock and load scene from Commando, and DiCaprio and the rest of the criminal shitbags are just dudes that Arnold has to kill, helped by a stellar performance from Jesse Plemons as the main FBI agent. I mean, look at this man. He's the embodiment of pure masculine might makes me blush. It's true that the rise of criminal elements before their fall is a main staple for Scorsese. After all, the man made Goodfellas, Casino, and Wolf of Wall Street. But while those films made you kinda root for the survival of the main cast of those films, despite the sheer criminality of it all, since The Irishman, it seems Scorsese has had time to reflect on the staple he's so masterful at, and elects to approach the matter in a way mostly unseen from the man, to almost deconstruct it in a way. You know DiCaprio's character is a scumbag. You know De Niro's character is a real scumbag. You know the rest of the criminal element of the film are scumbags, and they remain scumbags, mainly because they're literally based on real-life scumbags from 20th century history. The only character receiving some sort of redemption arc being DiCaprio, and even he gets what he deserves by the end. It's bold for Scorsese. It's bold for people trying to be Scorsese, and all the pins fall into place from there. Everyone is excellent here, as expected from a cast 
that probably had to fight tooth and nail to work with such a legend in the first place, outside of DiCaprio and De Niro, of course. Lily Gladstone deserves at least an Oscar nomination if she doesn't outright win it. I even like Brendan Fraser's small performance in the film, even if he's more hammy than a ham sandwich. But there's an elephant in the room, and that's the length which I can't help but compare to an actual elephant. Unless you decide to wait for the film to arrive onto streaming via Apple TV+, and unless your showing has an intermission, something that's actually been debated online as to whether it should have one or not, you gotta make time for Killers of the Flower Moon, and for the love of God, don't drink anything before going in, lest you need to pee. There's so much information, so much imagery to witness, and a lot on the line at any given time, that to miss any of it is akin to skipping a page in a book with mandatory context. This film is if you ask how much film you want, and Scorsese replies with, yes, but in a way, it's kind of a detriment. You can feel the bloat. It's lovingly crafted bloat. It has all the cinematography and never lets you forget that. You will look at the screen and you will like it, or else. You can imagine a shorter version of Killers of the Flower Moon. It probably would be a more accessible version of the same story. Could even be a better film for all we know. But would it be the same? No, of course not. The runtime could very well make Galactus shrivel and pant shitting terror, but the detail and attention to its narrative, the love of its narrative, the confidence of its narrative could never be replaced in a shorter film. As said in the beginning, it's all cinema, no fucks. Scorsese is a master, and if you have a showing of Killers of the Flower Moon playing at your local theater, I recommend it if you want to experience the master cook like he's never cooked before. Just remember, all cinema, no fucks. Take it or leave it, loser.